So the other big issue is conformity. We have built our education systems on the model of fast food. This is something Jamie Oliver talked about the other day. You know, there are two models of quality assurance in catering. One is fast food, where everything is standardized. The other are things like Zagat and Michelin restaurants, where everything is not standardized. They're customized to local circumstances. And we have sold ourselves into a fast food model of education. And it's impoverishing our spirits and our energies as much as fast food is depleting our physical bodies. I think we have to recognize a couple of things here. One is that human talent is tremendously diverse. People have very different aptitudes. I worked out recently that I was given a, a guitar as a kid at about the same time that Eric Clapton got his first guitar. <laughs> you know, it worked out for Eric, that's all I'm saying. You know, <laughs> in a way, it did not for me. I could not get this thing to work, you know. No matter how often and how hard I blew into it, you know, it just <laughs> wouldn't work. But it's not only about that, it's about passion. Often people are good at things they don't really care for. It's about passion and what excites our spirit and our energy. And if you're doing the thing that you love to do, that you're good at, time takes a different course entirely. Uh, my wife's just finished writing a novel, and uh, it's a, I think it's a great book. But she disappears for hours on end. You know this, if you're doing something you love, an hour feels like five minutes. If you're doing something that doesn't resonate with your spirit, five minutes feels like an hour. And the reason so many people are opting out of education is because it doesn't feed their spirit. It doesn't feed their energy or their passion. So I think we have to change metaphors. We have to go from what is essentially an industrial model of education, a manufacturing model, which is based on linearity and conformity and batching people. We have to move to a model that is based more on principles of agriculture. We have to recognize that human flourishing is not a mechanical process, it's an organic process. And you cannot predict the outcome of human development. All you can do is, like a farmer, is create the conditions under which they will begin to flourish. So when we look at reforming education and transforming it, it isn't like cloning a system. There are great ones, like KIPS, it's a great system. There are many great um, models. It's about customizing them to your circumstances and personalizing education to the people you're actually teaching. And doing that, I think, is the answer to the future, because it's not about scaling a new solution. It's about creating a movement in education in which people develop their own solutions, but with external support based on a personalized curriculum. Now, in this room, there are people who represent extraordinary resources in business, in multimedia, uh, in the internet. These technologies combined with extraordinary talents of teachers, provide an opportunity to revolutionize education. And I urge you to get involved in it, because it's vital not just to ourselves, but to the future of our children. But we have to change from the industrial model to an agricultural model, where each school can be flourishing tomorrow. That's where children experience life, or at home if that's where they choose to be educated with their families or their friends. There's been a lot of talk about dreams over the course of this uh, few days. And I wanted just to, very quickly, um, I was very struck by Natalie Merchant's songs last night, recovering old poems. I wanted to read you a quick, very short poem from W.B. Yeats, who some of you may know. He wrote this to his um, love, Maud Gone, um, and he was um, bewailing the fact that he couldn't really give her what he thought she wanted from him. And he says, I've got something else, but it may not be for you. He says this, Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, Enwrought with gold and silver light, of blue and the dim and the dark cloths, of night and light and the half light, I would spread the cloths under your feet. But I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. And every day, everywhere, our children spread their dreams beneath our feet, and we should tread softly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much.